Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about another one of the 17 essential plant nutrients. So if you have not yet joined in on plant mist, now is your time to do so. We are taking 17 days to count down to Christmas using all 17 essential plant nutrients. And in today's video, we are talking about carbon. So many of you probably don't think of carbon as an essential plant nutrient, but I'm here to tell you not only is an essential plant nutrient, is a primary macronutrient that makes up 45% of the plant's volume. Yes, that is right, 45% of the plant's biomass is carbon. Now you're probably thinking, well, the other 45% is oxygen, and you would be correct if you said that and watched my video on oxygen. However, the remainder has to make up literally all 15 other elements make up that last little tiny fraction of the plant. So the last 10% is literally made up of the last 15 and there are some other nutrients in there that obviously aren't essential but can be put into the plant as well so I thought since this video all otherwise would be very short very similar to the oxygen video I did if I didn't include a little bit more of a story with carbon and I hesitated at first to include the story of carbon in plants in uh, the 17 plant essential nutrients series or just on the channel in general because it uh, has a little bit of a political drive to it so yes you guessed it we are going to be having that lovely conversation about climate change now i'm not going to say what my thoughts on climate change are however you can look at the story that i'm going to tell you in two different ways you can look at it as we're all doomed or you can look at it as, okay, maybe it's not as bad as we thought. So I'm gonna give you a couple different points of view and you guys can hash it out in the comment section nicely, but you can hash it out in the comment section nonetheless. So first let's just talk about carbon from a plant perspective. Carbon is essential in literally every part of the plant, whether it's root shoots or stems, enzymatic processes, even photosynthesis, respiration, you name it carbon is present but it's not uptaken by the roots it's actually taken out of the atmosphere and it's taken out by those lovely little devices we call stomatas and i know i've talked about these before in so many videos whether it be foliar applications pesticides neem oil i think even plant leaf polish i've done so many videos where I've talked about stomata and the role that they play, but one of those roles is also carbon capture. The stomata only opens when the guard cells allow it, and the guard cells generally act like guards, and so they will regulate when said stomata is open. That means if the environment is too warm or deemed too warm by the plant, the guard cells will stay shut in hopes of preventing too much water loss through respiration, through the stomata actually opening, because the byproduct of those stomata opening is some water loss and so they will stay closed. They will also only open up at night and sometimes if there is a drought or a lack of root stress or there's a stress in the root due to lack of water, again those guard cells will say do not open. That being said, the guard cells in the world of climate change technically may not open as often and therefore you would think that would mean less photosynthesis. However, studies have found that this is not the case. So new research has shown we are ending up some with something called carbon dioxide fertilization effect. So that is a big no name for there's a buttload of CO2 in the atmosphere and that means the plants are getting a lot of carbon taken in. So this means when the plant is able to capture more CO2, it is able to photosynthesize more and therefore we're ending up with bigger plants, more rapid growth, and plants that are growing longer and longer season-wide. So here's a little bit of a fun fact I want to read to you guys. Since the beginning of the last century, photosynthesis on a global scale has increased in nearly constant proportions to the rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide. Both are now around 30% higher than they were in the 19th century. This is before industrialization began to increase significant emissions. So the carbon dioxide fertilization effect is directly 
involved in 80% of the world's current levels of photosynthesis. And the other 20% of photosynthesis is happening due to longer growing seasons in areas such as the boreal forest. So let's dissect that comment or that research just a little bit. With the increase in CO2 in the atmosphere, we are able to open our stomatas for less time and capture more CO2. This means plants in arid environments, plants that normally wouldn't open their guard cells for long periods of time due to that water loss we spoke about before, are able to capture more CO2 when the guard cells do open than they had in previous years. This means that they are more effective at actually causing photosynthesis and therefore also more effective in making bigger plants. This better utilization in CO2 means less water is needed to support a larger sized plant. And this is causing a greening effect in areas that normally would be considered arid. So that is a bonus per se in some respects because NASA actually released a study not too long ago. I believe it was December of 2020. So last year, not even 12 or about 12 months ago, when a study was released saying that the increase in foliage or greenery on the earth is actually having a cooling effect. So that increased CO2 availability in our atmosphere is responsible for more effective photosynthesis, meaning less water is needed to grow bigger plants. That combined with the fact that the world is warming and in all actuality, the plants help to decrease that warming effect Effect is kind of interesting nonetheless but I digress let's get on to the next point the next point is that plants are able to capture co2 for longer periods of time and this is because of global warming so because the net figure of whatever is going on out there is resulting in an increase in temperature now I don't know if personally, because I don't study climate science, I don't know if this is from CO2 and human activity, or if this is just a normal cyclical cycle of glaciation and deglaciation. I don't know. But the world is warming. The data shows the world is in a trajectory upward. Anyways, these warmer seasons are resulting in warmer winters, and therefore shorter winters in general. That means in areas such as the boreal forest, which is kind of where I am, just not even, you know, an hour north of me is the boreal forest, we have longer growing seasons. These longer growing seasons means that photosynthesis is taking place due to the fact that the ground is not yet frozen. So we talked about whether or not to fertilize in the winter and one of the discussions we had in that video was that if the ground's not frozen, water can be uptaken, photosynthesis can happen, and therefore the plant will continue to grow. The same thing's happening in our boreal forest. So long as water is being taken up, photosynthesis can take place and therefore carbon capture can take place. So again, climate change ultimately not only is resulting in more CO2 in the atmosphere, it's resulting in longer seasons and therefore longer growing periods. Now, for me, in a selfish respect, this isn't a bad thing. I have a very, very short growing season. Hands up if you're in zone three or four, two or one hands up in the comment section because that's where I am and we struggle with this. We literally can start gardening June 1st generally. Maybe end of May we'll be able to lock out with no frost. Usually there's frost in May long and then we can go you know August maybe September but get, there's some times where we're just pushing it. So we really have a short growing season. So for me, I'm more than happy to have, you know, a couple extra weeks tagged on the beginning and the end of my growing season because ultimately there isn't much action that happens here in general. So this effect of a greener earth actually has a term and it's called earth greening. So it is a term that NASA made up and it basically refers to the fact that this extra CO2, the increase in temperature 
has ultimately caused a greener earth and more plants. So for us plant people, climate change, I mean, isn't a horrible thing because we end up with bigger, better plants. Am I right? Maybe, maybe not. So anyways, I didn't want this to ruffle too many feathers. I did want it to be kind of like a little bit of a fun look at what plants can do. And you know, maybe ultimately growing a garden is a great way to sequester carbon is what the takeaway from all of this is. And maybe Justin Trudeau and the Canadian government and Biden and all the other ones should give us carbon tax credits for growing gardens and plants. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about carbon capture and if you think NASA is crazy or if you think they're on track with something here. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!